I don't know why. Sorry, Stephen, I'm I have sorry, uh, the right. voice on my microphone, okay. uh, a little bit delay. Yeah, yes, I have a five seconds later, I, I have my same voice. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. okay. Can you hear me like this? Yes, yes, I hear you. I, I okay, think, uh, perfect. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, welcome so, in this uh, second webinar. I, uh, I will share my screen. Yes, I have a five seconds. Okay. Seconds. I have my... Uh, this is the second uh, webinar of a series of five webinars. The first, we spoke about uh, acquisition of data for digital technologies. If you want to follow me, please take a picture of the uh, QR code. You can uh, scan the QR code and uh, follow me on Instagram. It will be very nice for me. So I think... Uh, most of you already know me, so I will be very, very, very fast in my presentation, uh, already done by Stephen. I live in Rome. Uh, Stephen lives in Dubai. These beautiful cities are linked together to take this uh, webinar. <clears throat> this is my clinic. I already showed it in the first uh, uh, webinar. I really love digital technologies, as you can see. And particularly today, we spoke about software for guided surgery. Here, you can see one course in my clinic. Today, unfortunately, we have not so much time to go deeper in the use of the software, but I will do all of my best to explain to you the software. This is the agenda, just a brief introduction of the previous webinar, if there are some of you that will not attend the webinar. Then we will focus on the software for guided surgery from the data import, matching some errors can, uh, that can be present, segmentation procedure for the double scan technique, and then we move to implant planning. Today we will see just a single cases, but in the next webinar, we will focus on the execution of complete arch restoration and immediate loading as planned. So in the previous webinar, we spoke about intraoral scanning, acquisition of the anatomy of the patient, teeth and soft tissues, CBCT scan acquisition, and also digital smile design. Why digital smile design? Because we need a walks up. We need a prosthetic uh, pre-visualization of the definitive restoration in order to plan our implant in the correct prosthetically driven position. Last webinar, we focused a lot on the diagnosis as the key of the success. This is the reason why I love the software for the guided surgery, because allow to us to uh, match all together um, anatomy of the patient, radiographic anatomy, walks up and to make a perfect diagnosis and perfect planning. So as I told you before, intraoral scan acquisition, STL file, CBCT scan, DICOM file, and walks up again STL file for the planning. So today we need to move to scan, move to plan. So the question is, what do we need to plan our cases of guided surgery? Still a brief uh, introduction. We need radiograph, DICOM file. We need teeth and soft tissue, STL file. We need walks up, STL file. In the previous webinar, we spoke a lot on the CBCT scan. STL file for the anatomy of the tissues, uh, for the works up. Today, we are focusing on the software. Software is the point number four. Software in general, software for guided surgery are the software that allowing for virtual implant planning using the acquired data, CBCT scan, DICOM data, and STL file. Uh, today, we have a lot of software in the market. Today, I want to spoke on some software that has original libraries from Austin. I use in my practice RealGuide, 
In the last year, I moved to Exoplan from Exoged. There are other software, for example, Implant Studios from 3Shape and other software. The first three, Real Guide, Exoplan, and Implant Studio, are software that need a license. There are other software that are free or partially free because you need to, uh, the software can be completely free or you have to pay for uh, STL in order to print the template. However, I want to spoke about the first two software, the Algate Dexoban, because I use in my practice. Nevertheless, I will uh, uh, give to you some general information that are valid for all the system that you used. In the literature, there are a few manuscripts regarding the software. For example, this manuscript is uh, a review of virtual implant planning software. Uh, the definition that author gave is virtual implant planning system integrate the CBCT scan for the bone quantity and virtual model to design the guide for the prosthesis. Very general definition. In this study, the authors tested five software regarding the modality of integration of the DICOM data virtual dental models and design of the surgical template. In brief, uh, all the software allow for a DICOM interface. Uh, we will see uh, some live example. Uh, it's possible to reduce the artifact to modify, to manipulate the DICOM file, the same for the STL file, matching, and then the software allowed to view 3D and 2D cross-section. I will explain that I use 3D models to plan from a prosthetic point of view and bidimensional cross-section to see the implant uh, in relation with the bone. And then some software have the possibility to design the guide with some intervention by the operator. Some software design automatically the guide, some software allow just for fully guided surgery or the software for only the first drill. However, in the second part of the manuscript, that is the conclusion from the literature, is that depending on the software that you use, you can have some more option or some limitation. Of course, the software that are with license maybe are more complete without some limitation, but also is very important to choose the software basic on the implants that you used. And as I told you before, for Austin, I suggested Exoplan as first choice, Real Guide, Implant Studio, or other software that are without uh, uh, license to pay. So our agenda, I will start now, is with some steps. Create a new patient, import Dicobel file from CBCT scan, import STL or DICOM in case of double scan technique, matching and control of the files, design the CPR and the nerve, walks up, and of course, implant planning. This is an example. This is real guide software, as I told you before. The first step is to create a new, a new patient. Very, very easy. Real guide works on PC and Mac. When we open, we need to register it. We have a license. This is free for 30 days, and then you need to pay to plan the implants. The first step is to add new patient, name and surname of the patient, that of beard, and we can put some notes, for example, type of work, type of implants, reference patients, some notes that we collected during the first visit. And, uh, like this, we create the new patient and the software works like a database. Then we need to import the data. I want to stop a few seconds here. The software allows to import STL file, picture, like photograph, documents, PDF, Word document, etc., or 3D examination or already planned project. The first step is to import the DICOM file. However, if we have a double scan technique, we need to select here double scan. Or if you have DICOM data and STL data, we just import DICOM folder, like in this case. 
is very, very important. This is a suggestion for you to put the data, DICOM and STL in one folder with the name of the patients. Inside this folder, two other folders, DICOM and STL, and to nominate the file in the right way because when we import, we cannot see a preview of the file. So it's very important to have the right name. As you can see, the second step is to import the STL file and the software asks to us, 3D marker, anatomy, walks up, antagonist or other. We need to select the STL file that we want to import. In the first webinar, we saw the three protocol to match the file. Anatomy using the teeth as a reference point, 3D marker is an external market. I will show some picture later, or the double scan technique. In this case uh, is a simple case. We import the anatomy. Anatomy is the uh, master model, the model of the arch where we need to work. For example, in this case is the lower arch. Then I can, I can import other STL file, for example, antagonist, and for example, this is antagonist, and for example, the WhatsApp. We can have a WhatsApp, for example, our dental lab sent to us, or we can create a WhatsApp directly in uh, directly in the software. So at this point, we have imported DICOM file and three STL, as you can see. At the moment, we have just import the data, DICOM and three STL. After that, the first step is to open the DICOM file. When you open the DICOM file, you have a lot of option here and you need to go step by step. The first step is void setting, is to reduce the volume of the CBCT scan. But please make attention because don't remove some parts that could be very helpful for the matching. And if you are asking why you need to reduce the volume, because most of the software works in cloud. So if we reduce the volume of the CBCT scan, we reduce the amount of data the software need to uh, upload and download from the cloud. So it's more, uh, more fast uh, all the online procedure. As you can see, we are sculpting. So removing some part or completely or just some selection. And as I told you before, it's very easy First, to also to have a very clear picture, but also to reduce the volume of the CB CT scan. Then the next step is to, uh, to choose some templates in order to have an X-ray view, teeth view, soft tissue view, bone view. Usually we use the bone view, but also to change the ISO value. ISO value allow to, uh, if you go on the right, to select the radio pack portion on the left, the soft tissues. It's very important to visualize in a correct way the teeth because as I told you before, in this protocol, we will use the teeth for the matching. These are the protocol that I spoke, spoke you before. Double scan, double scan could be DICOM plus DICOM or DICOM plus STL. We already spoke in the first webinar about this classification. Just to, uh, just to remind, DICOM plus DICOM is the classical double scan technique. Scan of the patient plus the prosthesis in the patient mouth with some walks to separate the arches or and the second scan only of the prosthesis. DICOM plus STL, the first scan is the same, patient plus prosthesis. The second scan is with an intraoral or extraoral scanner in order to have directly an STL file. In case of classical double scan technique, DICOM plus DICOM, we need to, <coughs> uh, <coughs> to transform 
DICOM file in STL file. And this is named uh, segmentation. We will see later. The second protocol is anatomy, classical protocol, DICOM plus STL. And we use the teeth for the matching in the double scan. Oops. <clears throat> I'm sorry. <clears throat> in the double scan, we use composite or gutta percha. The third protocol is the uh, 3D marker, external marker that we use in case we have a lot of scattering inside. We will see some example. So now we are focusing on the anatomy protocol, at least five teeth in two quadrant for accurate matching, one, two, three, four, five, six, and must to be clear and visible in both DICOM and STL file. This is an example of the matching. When we choose the model that we want to match, the software asks to us matching in which way do you want to perform the matching? Manually, keep original position, or same as. We never use keep original position, same as we will use later. I will show you later. The first is manual matching because it's the first model and we need to match. In the recent version, there is also an uh, assisted matching. I'm sorry. This is also an assisted matching. The software automatically match the file and works very, very well. But I don't want to show you now because it's a very automatic function. I want to show you the manual matching because it's uh, more uh, important. So first of all, you need to set DICOM and STL in the same position. Use the zoom. Here you have a shoes matching area because you can choose the area <coughs> uh, where the software create the matching. More bigger is the area, less accurate is the matching. However, if the image is very clear, you can leave five millimeters. But in case of scattering, you can reduce the matching diameter and you must to be very precise, but the matching will be very, very accurate. Usually three point are more than enough. However, you can put four, five. I suggest not more. And click fit point. The first step, the software uh, move the STL file. However, the matching, as you can see, is not perfect. There is another function that is the best fit inside the matching area. The software try to improve the fit. And now the matching is acceptable. As I told you before, now in most software, we have an automatic function that works very well in case the DICOM and the STL file are very clear. The second file that we want to match, we choose same as anatomy because we have already matched the first file then the second file will be repositioned in the same original way in agreement with the first file. So if the file are matching between them in occlusion, we need just to align the first because all the other file, including the works up, uh, will be in the correct position, uh, respect the first anatomy model that we aligned. Then we have the possibility to manually move the uh, model in order to improve the alignment, but it's an advanced option and I don't want to see now. <clears throat> After the matching, as I told you before, assisted automatic or manually with minimum three, maximum five points, we need to define the uh, panoramic imaging region, just to move parallel to the mandible or in the maxilla, parallel to the aesthetic plane. And to define some points inside the cortical bone in order to define the panoramic region. The last step before the walks up is to define the nerve. 
we can see the nerve very, very clear in the panoramic region or in the cross section. Why we need to sign the nerve? Because when we plan, we have a safety margin of two millimeter from anatomical structures such as the nerve. So if we sign the nerve, the software will give us an alert in case we are very close to the nerve. So we have at this point, all the file matched, the WhatsApp and the nerve designed. Sometimes we have some problems, for example, scattering movements, the quality of the CBCT scan and the displacement of the prosthesis. Now, just looking at the scattering, you can see here a lot of horizontal scattering. We have scattering when we have metal, when we have zirconia. So it's not possible to align with the teeth because the teeth are not clear visible. So we need an external market like in this case, moving the isovalue, as you can see on your left, on the right, we can see the most radiopaque area that are already present implants, metal, and the 3D marker. So we can align the 3D marker uh, because it is externally, the scattering is an internal. However, another problem sometimes is the movements. Patient, particularly all patients, uh, tend to move during the CBCT scan. And here you can see the effect. We have more than one image. The image is not clear. Also, you can see here we have movements. Look at the central incisor. Here seems to be out of the bone. Here is inside of the bone. We have more than one image. In this case, it's not possible to have an accurate alignment and the CBCT scan must to be uh, repeated. Another, match, another protocol to match the file, as I told you before, is the double scan for fully edentulous patients. In the first webinary, I stated that it's possible to use the double scan also in partial edentulous cases, but today is not sense because we use the teeth or the external market. When we use the double scan protocol, we need to have at least six markers in resin composite, in case we use a three-dimensional scanner like this, or Gutta Persia, in case of the double scan technique. And this is the results. When we move the isovalue, we can see the markers very, very clearly and we align easily the markers in the CBCT scan and in the prosthesis. In this case, the alignment is STL here to CBCT scan because it's a new protocol, new version of the double scan. However, in case of the classical double scan technique to DICOM file, we need to make the DICOM segmentation and to create an STL file. However, as also is demonstrated in the literature, there are a lot of difference in the segmentation procedure between different softwares and between also different operators. Now, before showing the error, I want to show you live an example of segmentation. This is real guide, and then I will show you also in the exoplan. I want to add a new patient, for example, double scan, just for example. As I told you before, the first step is to import the DICOM. I need to select double scan because I need to advise the software that I have a double scan and I need a segmentation. The software asks to me is upper or lower prosthesis. This is a lower DICOM folder. And I need to find, as I told you before, please, please put in a 
correct uh, folder, for example, DubScan, this is Italian language, lower prosthesis and CBCT scan. So it's very easy to recognize the file. Open. And now I'm importing the prosthesis. Okay. I can check here. This is the prosthesis. Then I need to import uh, double my spy patient. I need to import the CBCT scan with the prosthesis, DICOM folder, not double scan, CBCT, and open. So I have imported two set of DICOM file, patient plus prosthesis and only prosthesis. The first step is to open the prosthesis because I need to segment DICOM file. This is a different view comparing to the scenario that I showed you before, because in this part of the software, I just can make the segmentation. Here you can see the volume. I need to go to the setting. For example, I have different template. In case of soft tissues, I can see very well also the prosthesis. Coming back to voice setting, I can reduce, as I showed you before, in order to reduce the amount of data, just maintaining the prosthesis. And go to segmentation. In the segmentation, the software automatically detect eight markers because it's very radio opaque. But here you can see 949 is the ISO value that the software automatically detect. However, just look here. I have, sorry, the mouse. Mouse is very, very important. It's very complicated to uh, plan without the mouse. For example, if I make a measure here, rule, distance from here to here. If I move the value, completely change. For example, it could be 4.8 or could be less. The segmentation, we don't know what is the perfect number. We could know, but we need to calibrate the machine with a well-known object, with a well-known radiopacity, well-known measure, and we need to calibrate. If you have CBCT scan in office, we can try to calibrate and maintaining the set of the, the value that we find. However, if you send the patient to external uh, center for the radiograph is more complicated because uh, as I told you before, the segmentation is influenced by the machine, by the operator, by the software. So this is the reason why today we prefer the new protocol of the double scan. Patient plus prosthesis, the DICOM, of course, but the second scan, no segmentation, but scanning with the intraoral or extraoral scan directly STL mesh without segmentation, without um, uh, transformation of the DICOM to the uh, STL. However, we believe in the software, we choose the value and segment. In this moment, the software is creating an STL file. I can remove it. I need to cat, cat <laughs> uh, by area. Okay. And Apply. The software has exported one STL file, the marker. Then I need to go down, prosthesis. I need to find the correct value for the prosthesis and the same, the risk is to create a bigger or narrow prosthesis because I don't know the perfect number without any kind of calibration. 
when I find the preferred number, again, segmentation. Hit by area, removing, sorry. And apply and finish. Now I have two object here, prosthesis and marker. If I go to the CBCT scan of the patient and make open, now I can match the prosthesis. I will show you very quickly. Look at the scattering, but I don't need because I can move here and reduce the scattering. I just need a marker that I import. Marker and prosthesis are matched between them. So marker, matching, STL on the icon because I change, I segment the icon and matching. Sometimes it's not easy to find the point. The software automatically detect, but I think it's not correct. So I prefer by point. Assisted, as I told you before, is automatic, but assisted works very well with the natural teeth, not so much with the marker. One, one, maybe here and here. One inside and one inside. Hit point, try to best fit. Okay, and this is good. Here you can check, and as I told you before, you can move, but it's a big risk because if you improve the matching in one area, you can lose the matching in another area. So is not easy manually. I suggest just for expert people, but as I told you, the matching seems to be acceptable. And up, this is the segmentation. The software automatically detect the position of the prosthesis because it's already matched with the marker. And here I can start my planning. Now I move in uh, exoplan. <clears throat> Steven, please let me know if everything is okay. I think so. Yes, everything is okay. Okay, just here in exoplan is easier, the segmentation, because the software automatically segment. Double scan. I already prepare the workflow for implants, rapid planning. I will show you later one case in Exoplan. I hope we have time. I need to go a little bit fast. The software works in cloud. The, uh, the software seems to be very different, but at the end, all the software have the same option. Now the software is asking me CT data, patient is the first data, okay. Different real guide, I need to select import the icon. Exoplan is asking me import the icon, okay. I go in the wizard for the planning. I just imported the DICOM file. Then the software asked me, which protocol do you have? CT to mesh, CT to CT. CT to CT means double scan. CT to mesh means anatomy or 3D marker. CT to CT. Next, of course, he asked me the CT scan of the prosthesis. Is the contrary of the real guide that asked me before the prosthesis to convert in STL file. In this case, the software automatically try to 
make a segmentation. And I can go directly to next. Here I can check. Here you can see different color because sometimes we rebase the prosthesis with some material. I suggest to use always acrylic resin and not other kind of materials. Next. Okay. Let's make some adjustment. Auto detect and auto align. The alignment seems to be quite good comparing to real guide. And I can continue acceptable, acceptable uh, planning. In Exoplan, the segmentation is very easy because most of the software works automatically. Okay, I move again on my presentation. Desktop one, Keynote. And I want to show you some errors with the double scan. Sorry. Play. Okay. Before I show with you error of scattering, this is some errors of quality. Quality, because as you can see, there are some holes in the STL file. It's possible to fill, to modify the mesh, everything. But remember that the quality, sorry, the quality of the template depends of the prosthesis in the double scan and depends by the impression STL file in case of the anatomy. These are displacement. Uh, Steven, can you see my uh, the pointer of the mouse? Yes, yes. Okay, here yeah. you can see some displacement. The, pro the limit of the prosthesis is here, but the STL file is here. Also here you can see the black hole. Also here, because very often some centers put a stop here. When the patient close with a removable prosthesis, the prosthesis is stopped anterior and moved down posteriorly. This is a very, very common displacement. So please avoid any kind of stop anteriorly and just put the wax, as I show you in the first webinar, that perfectly stabilized the prosthesis, both anterior and posteriorly. Please. Look here, the process is completely out of the mucosa. Here, in this case, uh, there was an extraction recent, so the tissue held and there are some black hole. In this case, it's not easy to understand if there are a problem, for example, displacement, or here there are just some black area because the soft tissue uh, was modified. However, here you can see again in the area of the abstraction because the matching seems to be good. However, this is the same case after a new CBCT scan after a basing of the prosthesis and you can see that we have not black area. What is the uh, important point. When you collect the data, you can have a lot of errors. And if you have the errors, the accuracy of the surgery is not the maximum, but become lower. If you want the maximum of the accuracy, because it's a complex case, immediate loading, uh, flapless, you need to be very, very, very precise. The next webinar, I will show you this case uh, performed during a live meeting, rebasing the prosthesis, take a new CBCT scan, the fit was perfect, and we performed a perfect surgery. 18 implants, 35 minutes, immediate loading. I will show you in the next uh, webinar.
So now, just in five minutes, I want to show you some basic rules for the planning. Mesiodistal position, apicocoronal position, labiopalatal position, and implant angulation. From a mesiodistal position, it's very easy because the literature stated that we need 1.5 millimeter from the adjacent tooth and 1.5 plus 1.5, three millimeter between the teeth. However, with new implant, new connection, if you have a little bit less than one millimeter with the adjacent tooth, we can be safe because uh, particularly if the surgery is very minimally invasive, uh, flapless using internal connection with implant a little, a little bit deeper. However, I suggest to improve as much as possible the distance between the implants. When I plan, I want to place the tooth to be rehabilitated in front of me like this. Use transparency in order to see the implant because the rules is to place the prosthetic portion of the implant in the volume of the prosthesis to be rehabilitated. And moving the 3D model is very, very comfortable. Then we can rotate around the implant and looking mesial and distal. So we can measure also the distance between the teeth. We can check, we can zoom. It's very important the zoom, the zoom function because it allow us to perfectly see like we use a magnification. Mesiodistal, depending on the teeth, the wide, I suggest to use at least 4.5 millimeter in the posterior area. Axial view is very important because allow us to calculate the distance between the adjacent teeth. Apicocoronal position. Apicocoronal position is important from a biological point of view and aesthetic point of view. In anterior area, from an aesthetic point of view, I suggest to have at least four millimeter between the cervical portion of the tooth to be rehabilitated, the zenith, and the implant platform. And here we can measure four millimeter from here to here. It's very important to have a perfect wax up, however. And we can measure also both mesial and distal. In the posterior area, three millimeter is enough and depending on the soft tissues. If you have one millimeter of the soft tissues, I go deeper, even um, also maximum two millimeters because I want three millimeters, considering that one millimeter is very thin biotype. But if I have more than one millimeter, I place the implant at the bone level, like this. In case of thin biotype, we need to place the implant deeper to anticipate the bone resorption. Anticipate the bone resorption also allow to maintain the bone around the implant that is important from a biological point of view, but also from a functional point of view. Because in case of exposure of the neck of the implants, the horizontal force improve three, four times and the risk of implant fracture is higher. So this is the reason why we need to think biologically to anticipate the biological with resorption and to place the intent of the right diameter, at least 4.5 millimeter in the posterior area. Labiopalatal position is the same of the mesiodista, 1.5 millimeter, at least of buccal bone and palatal bone from aesthetic point of view, but also to support the soft tissues. Like in this example, I want to improve the bone with a GBR because I don't want food impaction. This is posterior area, but in aesthetic area, it's also an aesthetic consideration, but also I want the bone around the implant because as I showed you before, if here I have some bone resorption, here the horizontal force can expose my, the neck of the implant, a very high force and the risk of implant fracture is very high. So we need 1.52 millimeter of the bone also from a labio and palatal position. And here you can see this case. 
another case in the anterior area, maintaining the bone. Inclination, inclination is very important. Again, from aesthetic reasons, because we need to avoid buccally position at the implant because if the neck go very buccally, the risk of bone resorption is very high and bone recession, mucosal resorption, but also to maintain in the palatal area, the screw hole in order to deliver a um, screw retainer restoration. However, we can use angle drive to correct maximum 20 degree of uh, correction. So now I want to show you quickly three cases. This is uh, the case that we saw in the first webinar. If you remember Stefano, need two lateral incisors before the planning he need orthodontic treatment to open the space. Then collection of the data, DICOM, STL, matching the protocol is anatomy. We are also the WhatsApp. We perform a digital WhatsApp using the Smile Creator. And this is my planning as a as you can see, sorry, I put like this. Four millimeter at least here, 1.5 millimeter, that is the safety margin of the software. But I can also open here, maybe we can see directly here. Don't save here. I'm sorry. Just to show you the planning and then the finalization of the case. Not need it now. Cloud and the patient. I open the planning. So I can show you how I plan this lateral incisor. When I plan, I prefer, I, we have different layout. I just prefer 3D cross and axial here because in the 3D, I can also can remove the CT. I want to check the prosthetically driven position, the palatal uh, access of the all the prosthetic hole, but I want to plan here. Right lateral, palatal position, at least uh, four millimeters. I can measure also here. I'm sorry, I have a lot of button from uh, distance, from zoom, from here to here, about four millimeters. Then moving from left to right, I can see mesial and distally and need to maintain 1.5 millimeter. That is the safety margin, but I can also can measure here distance. 1.7, maybe a little bit less here. 1.3, but I put the implant a little bit deeper, internal connection. So I have the distance from the periodontal ligament that is good. But also if you see in the axial view, we have a lot of bone and we can perform the flapless or mini flap approach in order to maintain the tissues. Coming back to the presentation, Particularly in the aesthetic area, the three-dimensional position is mandatory. As you can see here, we have different space, more space on the right and less space on the left. However, we took flapless approach, a mini flap just with the mucotone, healing abutment, early loading with two temporary restorations in order to modify the shape of the tissues. But as you can see, the planning is very important, the three-dimensional position. And just to see here, definitive restoration, zirconia ceramic. 
screw retained because we plan a screw retained restorations. This is the shape of the zirconia. And you can see good soft tissues, but it's very important, the three-dimensional position. Two different shape, more space here, less space here, but the position of the implants is perfect in both situation. And this is, these are the final restorations. Palatal access, initial, and then the final restoration and a follow-up. Now I want to, I will show this case uh, the next webinar, I want to show you this case live. This is a patient with uh, a internal resorption of the upper right central incisor with a fistula. You need to extract the teeth and place an implant with immediate loading. I move again on the exoplan. I'm sorry, okay. Okay. Just sharing my screen. Okay, don't save. So now I want to start from the beginning with a new case. I think, uh, Stephen, you can see the exoplan screen. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is, for example, uh, webinar OSTEM. Yeah. I need to define my workflow. So in the central right, upper right incisor of implant planning with a temporary screw retained. Okay. And then just antagonist if you want. Okay, or I can also can select adjacent tooth, but it's not mandatory. Just to select the position of the implant and save. The first step when you start a new planning is open in Explorer. Here, I have the CBCT scan and the, uh, I'm sorry. Ah. Ah. Baba. Copy here. and put it in the folder of the exoplan. Because uh, as I showed you before, exoplan directly looking inside this folder for all the data. Okay. So I have two functions, implant planning, but now we have a very, uh, fast and easy rapid replanning. I want to show you this new function. Steven, I think I have 15 minutes, 20 minutes more or less. It's no problem. Okay, I think this is the most in interesting part. <laughs> okay, prototype. Okay. In this case, the software as to me, where is the CB CT scan? 
I put I put it inside the folder, so it's very easy to find. If you have a server in your clinic, you can put directly the server directly. The software automatically detects the CPR. I can modify, of course, but intelligence, artificial intelligence is very nice here. I go to the wizard and go to planning. In this case, as I showed you before, the software asked it to me, CT to measure, CT to CT. This is not double scanning. This is uh, CT to mesh. However, as I told you before, here I have the possibility to modify the value. I have already selected soft tissue, bone, tooth, because uh, using CBCT scan in my clinic, I set this data. So for each scan, the software automatically detect soft tissues, bone and tooth according to my parameter. CT to CT, next. The software is asking me, where is the, uh, no, sorry, back. CT to mesh, the software has to me, where is the upper jaw, SDL, master. I can also use PLI with the color. In this case, I can use antagonist, I can import other mesh, but we don't need because we will use the tooth as a reference point. And I will show you that we perform an walks up directly on the software. Here, the software has to me just three points, not more. So I can put one here. One maybe here. And one other side. Uh, sorry, one, two, and three. One, two, and the first at three. Next, I love the alignment in the Exogram because it's uh, very nice. So here, the software automatically finds for the best alignment as possible. The blue is good, acceptable, and next. So here I need to perform the walks up. However, I just moved to expert mode. Remove the CBCT and put the master. In the expert mode, I can extract a tooth. I selected the tooth that I need to extract and the software automatically detect the tooth and will extract. I define the tooth and okay. So I have created a new model without the tooth. I can use this tooth as a walks up or I can do a new one coming back to the wizard. Mesial contact tooth, distal contact tooth, sorry. It's the contrary, mesial and distal, ah, mesial and distal, just to choose a library, very similar, maybe just to go. And next, because then I can modify the position Exoplan is fantastic for the CAD design. I can uh, reduce the volume. 
for example, I can just move. And sorry, I go quickly because we have not so much time, but it's very easy. Rotate Bucolingua. And move again on the back. Move Bucolingua. Move in a direction. Okay, I don't like the library, but uh, I don't want to lose time. Just to show you how it's easy to perform a new WhatsApp. A little bit bookily comparing with the original one because it was moved bookily due to the trauma and the internal resorption. So, and then next. Now we have on the implant planning phase, select the implant. I can, this one and just, okay. Select the implant. In this case, it's a post-extractive implant. So OSTEM, TS, maybe also TS4, for example, I use a TS3 soy with the soy surface, 4, 4, 13, in order to have more stability, primary stability. Sleeves, I immediately select the surgical sleeves original from OSTEM. So I have all the parameter for the design of the guide. Confirm and just place quickly the implant and then I will go to modify the position. I prefer this one. In this case, I have several rules to respect. The first is four millimeters from here. Of course, inside the volume of the tooth to be rehabilitated. I've also part of the roots, the distance from the adjacent tooth. This is the internal resorption. I need to go palatally, but I want to maintain palatal position for screw retainer restoration. Four millimeters. So I have in the tools, measure tools from here is for here, perfect. Here I can change the diameter of the implant. Here I can change the length without coming back on the uh, software. Here, angulation. But I also can check in the three-dimensional view because also in the three-dimensional view, I can move the implant in all the direction. Honestly, I think the plane could be fine. Palatal position. Palatal position for the screw retainer restoration. Here I will improve with a connected tissue graft and some uh, uh, graft. I have a lot of space for the primary stability from the root from here. Sorry, roots measure from here to here, five millimeter as is good. So I can go to finalize my project. This is approval of the planning. I'm sorry, I go very quickly because I want to show you also the video, five minutes, the video. 
and just how to design, how is easy to design the surgical template. Finish, I'm done, expert mode or design the surgical template. I go to design the surgical template. Remove the CT scan. And this is the mesh used, sorry, next. I use the mesh where I removed the tooth. Very quickly, here the base of the sleeve, even if it's all plastic, I can reduce. The, if we have space, we can maintain on 2.5. Mesia distal, the software automatically reduce, but I want to maintain in the buccal area. Rounding the sleeve because it's all plastic and the height between the implant neck. If I go flapless, I maintain like this because I want some space here for the bone uh, tissues, uh, allow the water to clear. If I go with a flap, I can improve so that I have more guide between my drill and the template. Other option, tolerance depends of the uh, machine and you need to make some tests. Also the offset of the undercuts here, Usually I prefer a little bit more comfortable and set the insertion. If you reduce the offset, the template will be very, very strong. If you improve a little bit soft. Here we have not set any anchor pin. So maybe 0.4 is fine. Other parameter depending of the printing machine. So it's not easy to give to you the perfect number because you need to test with your machine. Next step is to define the guide. I did an error here because I didn't take all the palatal. This is an error. I suggest to take all the palatal because now I need to design my guide maximum here. On the contrary, we can use some palatal to have more stability. Then I can decide if go up or down, depending of uh, how many feet I want. Maybe I can go down here just to cover the sleeve. The thickness 2.5 is good, depending also of the resin that you used. And next, it's very easy. I don't like uh, half guide in order to recover some resin. I suggest use a guide on the left and right. And sometimes just if uh, we have some matching uh, that is good in one side, that's not good in another side because the impression is uh, uh, not good, maybe you can have half guide, but if the impression, the matching is good, I suggest full guide. These are window for the inspection in order to be sure that the guide fit well. I suggest a couple very close to the sleeve and maybe one and one posteriorly in order to avoid any kind of displacement. And we can also add, for example, text, the name of the, the case, but we can uh, modify also the test. Just for example, OSTEM, double S. And next, and we are finished. The software automatically will create the template and export STL file without any adjunctive fee. On the contrary, we are real guide required some fee for the exportation. Continue anyway. 
And now we can export the STL file ready for printing. So I move again on the software. Share screen, okay, desktop one. And I want to show you in a few minutes, this is uh, the same case that we already plan. The video uh, go uh, fast because we have not so much time, eight minutes. This is the extraction. You see on the plan, there is an internal resolution. You can see here, resorption. Cleaning because there are a lot of uh, granulation tissue. And this is the guide. Maybe it's a little bit different. These are the inspection window. Look here, it's very important to see the perfect fit. There is not any area, any gap between the teeth and the template. There are one here, two, three. I suggest a close to the sleeve and maybe on the back in order to be sure that nothing appear. I plan one, uh, anchor pin, not before, but in original plan one anchor pin. And this is the first drill. In the next webinar, we spoke about the execution and I promise you, I will show only clinical cases, explaining to you the surgical kit and uh, uh, some video of uh, uh, clinical cases. This is the second drill microscopic view. We under prepare a little bit the all the implant site in order to have more stabilities. As you can see, the buccal bone is uh, damaged. So this is a classical tunnel technique because I plan graft, xenograft and connective tissue graft. This is a classical tunnel technique in order to prepare an envelope for the connective tissue graft. The graft, reopen the hole for the implant. This is xenograft, bovine bone, the template, I just want to anticipate, this is the soy surface. You can see it because it seems to be wet because it's a hydrophilic surface. Here, I started on the reverse mode and then I change in order to allow auto centration of the implant. But uh, I will um, explain the drilling protocol and implant placement in the next webinar. Now change and go. The yellow line allowed to orient the internal hexagon. In this case, it's important because I plan immediate loading, even if I want to rebase the temporary. Here, you can see the platform of the implants, the transition zone, four millimeters, and the uh, envelope that I created for the connective tissue graft. I, as I show you before, I'm sorry. Ah, four millimeter, I'm so sorry. Here, four millimeter for the cervical portion of the implant, the, the tooth and the implant neck. Connected tissue graft from the palatal and premolar molar area. 
I remove epithelium and connective tissue, and then this epithelization outside the patient mount, maintaining the periosteum in order to reduce the pain and the uh, problems for the patient during healing. This epithelization, chair side. suture on the palatal, just to make a compression and to reduce the bleeding. And then classical insertion of the connective tissue graft from the back to move the connective tissue deeper on the envelope, just with a couple of sutures. This is a resorbable suture. Classical viewpoint. In the meantime, I have one question. Thanks for the great case. Why did you put bone then install the input? Very nice question because uh, I tried both before the implant and then the graft, before the graft and then the implants. But as I put just in uh, stop one second, in general, I prefer to put before the implant and then the graft. However, if the gap is uh, narrow, is small, it's not easy to put the graft. So in the case, the gap is one, 1.5 millimeters, is very small. I put the, the graft before and then reopen the implant side or with the special instrument that you saw or with the last drill at uh, maximum 100 rpm very very uh, slow without irrigation just to reopen the implant side and this is one option but in general i prefer to put the implant before however if the gap is at least two millimeters in the literature, in the past, uh, uh, the literature suggested to graft only if the gap was two millimeter of more. And it's correct to place the implant and then the graft. However, in the aesthetic area, I prefer to graft in any case, even if the gap is small. If the gap is very small, I put the graft before, reopen the site and place the implant. This is my orientation. Then I have another question regarding the software. In real guide, does segmentation mean converting DICOM to SCL? Yes, not only in real guide. Segmentation is a procedure to convert any DICOM file in STL. For example, in real guide or in other software, you can open the CBCT scan, the cranium, the skin of the patients, and you can segment all the mandible, the maxilla, to create an STL file and to print, if you want to print all the mandible, for example. Segmentation is a general term to convert DICOM to STL. I prepare it in advance uh, like a Maryland bridge, just to be sure if implant has not a good stability to cement on the adjacent tooth. But in this case, I use the Maryland just to set the position to rebase the the uh, temporary on the uh, temporary abutment, the tooth on the temporary abutment, and then I will remove the metallic wings and screw the temporary on the temporary abutment. Just some racing, check the occlusion, check the position. Sometimes it is also good to place some rubber dam in order to avoid that resin material goes through the gingiva. Just two, three minutes and I'm finished. 
waiting for uh, polymerization. I love the guided surgery because always everything goes as planned. And this is the angle drive. If you remember of the plan, we perfectly plan the screw hole position that was a palatal, but very, very uh, um, close to the incisal area. So we need the angle drive just to perform easily. The normal drive doesn't go, I need the angle drive because we plan with using 5, 10 degrees of angulation that the angle drive allows. Then in the lab, we need to fill with fluid composite flow, polymerization, and then it's very important to avoid any kind of compression. We need a very smooth and narrow emergence profile at the beginning. After os integration and maturation of the soft tissue, we can create some compression if needed. Very important at the beginning to avoid any kind of compression. Then also to remove the metallic uh, part of the Maryland. So we can directly screw retain the temporary restoration. Maybe if you want to be a little bit more safe, you can splint the temporary with one adjacent tooth, just using a, a classical bonding technique. Very important to refine very well all the steps to polish, to refine and polish the emergence profile as polished as possible and put the temporary restoration with the angle drive. Yeah, if you want, you can splint with uh, one adjacent tooth, check the occlusion, avoid any kind of contact, static and dynamic contact, all the movements. There are some red we need to remove. Sometimes the aesthetic is not good because the temporary must to be a little bit shortened at the contralateral in the incisal part. In the gingival area is normal. Then we can modify with some pushing after integration. Teflon tape to close the hole. And just the initial case with the fistula. And this is the final restoration. Maybe I will show in the next webinar the, this is the final restoration. I will show in the next webinar uh, the prosthetic, uh, the prosthetic phase. However, here there is the connected tissue graft. The volume of the tissue remain quite stable. We lost a little bit the papilla here, but we have a lot of resorption and we do everything immediately. Okay, Steven, I'm so sorry for the late, but I wanted to show yes, this no case. No I already answered a couple of questions. I don't know if there are some more questions. Mm. Okay, we have a question is um, in the real guide, uh, does segmentation mean converting daikon to... I got the answer. Yeah. I got the answer. Segmentation is a generic term, not only in real guide. However, the answer is yes. Segmentation means uh, converting daikon to STL, but it's a generic term, not only in real guide. And uh, just a curiosity, it's, it's possible to convert not only the prosthesis in the wax up. It's possible also to convert the bone, all the school, mandible, maxilla, with the daikon. It's possible to convert in STL and to print. Now, mm. most clinics have a printing machine in office. You can convert all the school, the maxilla, if you want to pre-plan, uh, titanium mesh, uh, everything you want. 
you can convert any DICOM file in SDL5 and the term, the name is segmentation. However, segmentation has some limitation that I show you in the webinar. Maybe two, doctor always use a xenograph in the gap. There is another question, new question. Yes, I use a xenograft in the gap in case of immediate implants. In case of uh, GBR, I use a mix of autogenous bone and xenograft. If uh, the threads of the implant are exposed, I use 100% autogenous bone on the implant threads and 50% of autogenous and xenograft. GBR, in the sinus, 100% of xenograft, in the gap, in case of immediate implant or socket preservation, 100% of xenograft. Okay, so next would be, um, okay, he, he's asking, may I ask why did you put the bone, then install the implant? The same, I answered during the, uh, the webinar because the gap was small, less than two millimeters. When the gap is two millimeter, one, two millimeters or more, I prefer to place the implant and then the, uh, the xenograft. But in case the gap was very small, I prefer to place before the graft, reopen the implant site with a drill on some instruments and place the implant. But in general, before the implant and then the graft, if the gap allow to do this. Okay, so <clears throat> I think this is all the questions we have for uh, today. I think so. I'm sorry yeah. for the late, but it's not, what is uh, it there are a lot. So, yes, it's not easy to to yeah. manage with two softwares and some cases in one hour. It in the next nice webinar. Thing. In the next webinar, I promised only clinical cases. I want to show you the execution with the OSTEM One Guide Kit. So I want to explain the kit with some cases, and then we will see some full arch restoration and immediate loading. Only clinical cases for the next webinar. So uh, we invited the, uh, all the doctor and more and more to enjoy the next webinar. Yes. So we will be waiting for the next webinar. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> we are excited yes. for it. Yes, but I, I needed to introduce. It. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we really thank you very much for uh, this lecture. Um, so now we, we have like a simple question. We want to see if people are using which software they are using. Everyone can have uh, like the questions pop up now. Maybe you can see if you use Exoplan, 3Shape, Real Guide, or if you didn't use the digital before. So maybe you can answer. Yeah, I think we can, maybe majority still didn't use uh, digital and exo using Exoplan. Yes, during the votation, I have another question from El Said Ahmed. Thanks, Dato, la question. Uh, do you think when insert implant after graft, it may be led to fail implant cause it's not phase out of bone first? Uh, Maybe in the literature, there is no answer to this question. However, it's very, very interesting. In my experience, uh, I had one or two failing in the immediate implants uh, that maybe could be related. So this is uh, the reason why if uh, I can, uh, I prefer to put the graph before. However, I also, think that uh, um, is not really the truth because for example, in case of socket preservation, I used 
the same xenograft. I place the implant three, four months later, and maybe so the graft remain. So, uh, and uh, I use some materials that uh, are used for several years in, uh, in the literature. So I'm not, uh, I don't believe that we can have more risk of failure placing the graft before. However, it's very interesting the question of the doctor. So my final answer could be, if possible, and I think it's possible in 80, 90% of the cases, place the graft later. Just in some cases, when the gap is very small, uh, it's not easy to place uh, graft and connective tissue graft uh, all after the implants. Uh, so I prefer just when the gap is very small, but it's very interesting point of discussion. And uh, I partially agree with the doctor. So I don't believe that we improve the risk, but I'm not sure 100%. So if possible, I prefer to place the graft uh, uh, later. Uh, from a biological point of view, the implant will be in contact with the graft anyway. And uh, reopening uh, the site, uh, uh, I think the implant will, uh, will reach the stability in the bone, will move uh, the graft. So I don't believe, but I'm not sure 100%. So it, it's open question. <laughs> It could be nice uh, to have a research in, um, in this direction. Thanks, doctor. <clears throat> so I'm really happy to, to see that 50% uh, use exoplanetary shape that are the best software that I know. 80% real guide, oh, no. very good uh, uh, response from the questioner. I'm very happy. Yeah. Okay, so now um, maybe I will announce about the coming lectures. So our coming lecture is <clears throat> will be the twenty September, September next month, and only clinical cases. <laughs> yeah. No literature. <laughs> The clinical cases and execution. As much in person, yes. Execution, I want to explain the one guy kit and show clinical cases. Yes, okay. we will be waiting for it. It will be also a Wednesday, not Friday. We changed the day and it will be a little early. Okay, so, um, and then next, uh, I want to announce about, uh, we have, the, our first meeting, Austin meeting in Dubai, <coughs> Middle East. it will be next year in February. So stay tuned, wait for the- uh, Save the date. Yeah, save, save the date. Okay, so uh, I think we finished and we thank you, Professor Marco, very much for your uh, great lecture. It's we are always really my great pleasure. We really appreciate it. <clears throat> My real pleasure. Yeah. And see you September 20. Yeah, see you again. <clears throat> bye bye. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Thank you everyone for attending today. Bye bye. <clears throat>